projection mapping is a cheat code to go in viral right now. I've had a couple of projection mapping videos that did crazy views and I've been getting tons of questions on how to do it. And it's actually really, really simple. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do projection mapping too and hopefully have some banger videos yourself. So here's what you need. One, you're gonna need a projector, obviously. Uh, you can pretty much get any cheap one that you find on Amazon. I got this one. Uh, to watch movies outside during COVID, and now I'm repurposing it as my uh, main projector. It's just a little Anchor Nebula capsule that I have mounted on a tripod. It is wireless. Uh, you can connect to your computer via HDMI or how I prefer to do it wirelessly via AirPlay. And I don't know if this is a good projector or not. I think any basic projector on Amazon will be just fine. I mean, the resolution on this one is comically small and it's treated me perfectly fine so far. So don't break the bank, just get a projector, a cheap one, make sure you like doing this and you can always upgrade later. Two, you're going to need Mad Mapper or another similar projection mapping program. You can download this for free and you can use the demo version for free that just has a watermark or you can use my code Nick and get 20% off the regular premium pro version. I suggest downloading the demo, playing around with it, seeing if you like it, and then going for the upgrade. Additionally, optionally, you can make your own animations. I use After Effects. If you're watching this channel, you probably are familiar with making your own videos as well. So you can use a program, you can pull them into Mad Mapper, or you can just use the preset animations inside. I'm gonna be projecting onto this cool A-frame cabin sculpture surface. An important thing is you want to project onto the lightest surface that you can. Why? Because light bounces off of white surfaces. It gets absorbed into black. Just some basic science stuff. Light surfaces are going to be much, much better. Also, obviously, or maybe not, you want it to be as dark as possible. The darker it is, the better your projection is going to show up. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so I have my projector pointed at my surface. I've launched the AirPlay app on my projector, so it's now looking for uh, you know, a, a broadcast source. So uh, since I'm using Mac, I'm gonna go up and do AirPlay. So up here on the right, click here, and I'll do screen mirroring. I'll click that. Nebula is the name of my projector. So I'll click that, and now we are currently extending. You can see my desktop is being projected on. If I move my mouse over, it actually, here's my mouse on it because it's using it as a second monitor. Uh, just make sure that you are doing extended display here. This is important. You want to do extended display. Boom. And then now we can go ahead and launch Mad Mapper. And I'll be greeted by this new project screen. Don't know what any of this means it's okay with the default settings let's click okay and so now we need to tell mad mapper the source to use so we're going to go to our output click on our video output and then just go ahead and make sure that your projector is being uh, selected here not your monitor or anything like that you're not going to see anything right away the next thing we need to do is go up to output and enter full screen mode just remember the command T to get out of it because when you enter full screen mode, if you're not mirroring properly, everything is gonna go black and you're not gonna know how to escape. So command T will get you out of it. But if you did everything correctly, then you'll see your projector shift. We don't have any content on it yet, so let's drop some out to make sure that it's working properly. Go over to the media tab in the top left and let's drag out one of these generators like this white block, boom, you can clearly see that my projector is working now. Now this area here, this gray bounding box, let me go ahead and move some of my stuff out of the way here. Uh, yes, it's important that my, my face is in it. It built a human connection between us. So this gray area here is the uh, 
ends of the projector. So anything outside of this will not appear. I'll go ahead and drag stuff to the full projector area just so we can understand our full projector region. Okay, everything I wanna project on is being covered. This little chimney's not, but it, that's all right. We're not gonna do everything. So let's go ahead and map our first surface. I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this into a grid generator by clicking this and then double clicking to make things a little more visually interesting. We can bump up the thickness down here and we can add more or less lines, whatever. Okay, grab a corner and start dragging your points in until they uh, are matching up to the corners of your object. So just give me a second here to kind of line things up. And if you need to do any kind of minor nudging, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move things by smaller amounts. All right, so I'm gonna do my top corner here and then get this corner into position. Okay, cool. We have uh, part of our roof mapped on beautiful let's go ahead and do this front section here so i'll go ahead and just drop another grid generator on boom and let's snap these things in place there is snapping so if you get close to a corner it will grab it which is really really nice and handy doing the bottom corner and then the top now you'll notice because i'm doing this triangular shape it's getting really skewed which it could be fine if that's what you want but i don't want this to be on this really skewed angle this is not right so i'm actually going to approach this a little bit differently i'm gonna uh, kind of drop this square into place and make it look like you know dimensions are roughly right and let me change this to a solid color so it's easier to see and I'm gonna mask this now instead so under my video if I scroll down I will go down to masks and I'll just add on a triangular mask boom and now you can see this is being masked out this is the opposite of what I want so I'll go ahead and click invert mask and now we have this uh, triangular mask on our surface without kind of messing up the dimension so that looks pretty good let's put it back into a grid generator and see cool now we can keep going with the masking let's say these windows you know if they were something that mattered more like uh, another surface that we wanted to mask around we can keep dropping masks into this so i could click another mask here and kind of position this maybe to be around um, the doorway and get this into position on the doorway and then what that would allow us to do is we could put some maybe some some other footage behind here so i'll go ahead and drop out um, maybe this strobe material and now we have this really crazy strobe flashing and i'll just put this into the doorway and i'll uh, send this to the back by dragging it down on this surface cool now we should you know theoretically just have strobing going on just in this doorway because it's that's all that's being revealed obviously my mask is not amazing but you get the general idea i'm gonna go ahead and delete this stroping just for now because it's kind of driving me crazy but one more general mapping technique is if your surface is rounded so for example i'll use this airpod case and i'll throw this right in the doorway here and if i try to map something to this let's say i draw on another solid color and just to make things a little bit different i'll go into the media tab the appearance and make this a red color just shrink it down and kind of roughly map this out and we can see what i'm talking about with the roundedness okay i'm going to zoom my camera in just see a little bit more okay so clearly i have this hard edge happening right if i go down under masks it says mesh warping if i go ahead and turn this on i'll get some new options unlocked so i could add some warping points if i click here i can add a new point and then kind of you know warp it how i want this isn't what i need right now but this is good to know if you have any kind of crazy shapes you can make them uh, what i want to do is click spherize and now we're dealing with a more rounded um, and if we you know put on the grid generator you can see boom how cool is that and then I can grab these corners and I can kind of tweak them to make this a more rounded shape. Of course, you don't have to put it into the spherize mode, but this is really, really handy if you are doing any sort of not straight surfaces. 
Okay, so I got this mapped out pretty well, but this is not part of my, my vision. So I am going to take this away, but hopefully you got value out of seeing me do Bezier warping. All right, delete this, move my AirPods out. Let's add some animations and stuff to this. So within Mad Mapper, we have a ton of control. We have a ton of different stuff provided that we can use. You know, if you just double click on anything, um, it will add that texture to it. And then within all of these materials, you can change all these different properties. So you could, you know, scroll down and you can make things faster and, you know, have all sorts of controls, scale it up, scale it down, make it faster, make it slower, make it choppier, all of this stuff. I'm not going to go into all this because it's all pretty, um, self-explanatory and each different material has tons and tons of different options that are all really cool. An important thing to note is that if you apply one of these materials to multiple surfaces and you make any of these changes, you are making it globally, which that might be what you want, that might not be what you want. And if it's not what you want, then you're gonna to have to go ahead and right click and duplicate the media and then go ahead and apply that to a surface and then you can change uh, them one by one. I apologize for these horrible visuals, but this is live, this is happening live. So you can think of the media tab as kind of your global library where all of your uh, media is dropped in and you can make these kind of global changes to it. If you wanna make more individual changes, to the media without um, duplicating. You wanna make specific changes to one part of it. You can open up the video tab, click on your surface, and you could do things like maybe you wanna add color here. So the source media is still the same if we change the speed or anything like that, but there are some specific controls that you can have over each piece of the same uh, type of media. Okay, so what if you wanna put your own media on, all you have to do is scroll down to either the images or the movies and you can click the plus or drag stuff in. So I'll go ahead and load in some, some of my own home movies that I've made. Okay, so I just added in two videos and these are different and I'll explain why. So I dropped in one that is a square or rectangular footage that will drop right onto my surface here. Now, since this is not a square, like my surface was, I can go ahead and I can fix that on this left side of the screen. Let's move myself and over here. You've probably been wondering what this left side of the screen is, and you're gonna learn now. So this bounding box on this side represents this bounding box here. So if I move these closer, you can see we're fitting our content better to the projection area. I could also globally just scale this down to fit better, and I can use this to rotate the source media. So this is a good way to get stuff into position and fine tune it uh, a little bit more. I got too many screens going on. Now, another piece of footage I have is for this, because I don't wanna just drop in a square footage here, so I created my own triangular footage. I did this in After Effects. And now uh, this is fitting nicer to the actual surface. Doesn't look very distorted. All right, so what did I tell you? It's pretty simple stuff, right? And it's super high impact. So go set up a projector, download your demo of Mad Mapper, go point it at some light surfaces, and go have fun with it. And if you make anything cool, show me. I'd love to see it. Anyway, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.